In the last three months, in a series of events that has been deemed the war on pay to win, I've made numerous videos talking against unturned pay to win servers, the main specific one being Brad's RP. Brad's RP is a pay to win server. This is now common knowledge. Now, I thought that this wasn't going to change. However, on May 7th, 2021, I was sent a post on the unturned forums by Nelson Sexton himself talking about the banning purchases of individual in-game items. Now when you read this you can immediately see repeatable purchase for server bucks. Bad. Yeah, Brad's RP does this. This is how they make a majority of their money. Now of course this was incredible news. Now this is a request for comments, so he was asking for comments on how this could be implemented or if anyone had any concerns. Now. The majority of the original posters on the forum didn't really have a problem with it. And then Modern Mo, the owner of Modern Hosting, another unturned pay to win server, created a forum account just to say that this shouldn't be implemented into the game. Now, as soon as I saw this, I immediately knew that if all of these server owners wanted to, they can funnel all of their donors and loyal players to this forum and say that they don't agree with this change and then Nelson probably wouldn't implement it, right? So I did the only thing that I could think of. I made an entire six minute YouTube video on it. I encouraged my subscribers to go to the forum so that they can join the conversation because if we're gonna have a lot of people possibly come onto the forum that have a biased opinion against this, I'm gonna send people that might have a biased opinion in favor of this. So that's what I did. Now some of you are probably wondering what happened since then? Well, well as of the making of this video, this forum post has almost 2,000 views and it has 218 replies. Now there is a fucking monumental shitload of things that people posted. However, when you scroll down, what's funny is that you'll see a lot more of this message of a new person joining the server and commenting on this fucking post. Yeah, these are a lot of my viewers. A lot of them made forum accounts, came onto the forum, read the post Nelson made, and then agreed with it because pay to win sucks. Of course, Modern Mo, he kind of gets a little bit of my respect because he had the balls to actually post on the forum and object to this like yeah it's very obvious that he's trying to keep his monopoly as are all of these other server owners but at least he publicly came on to the forum and didn't bitch in nelson's dm how do i know that people bitched in nelson's dm well nelson uploaded a video to the smartly dressed games youtube channel of him having a call with brad and fudgy now, the one thing that blew me away was that Brad and Fudgy were scared to post on the forum because they were afraid they would get backlash. And I wasn't the one that said this. Nelson himself said this. They didn't want to post on the forum. They wanted to get in a little private call with Nelson. They were like trying to justify all of their practices. Now, of course, I saw this and I immediately thought I have to have a call with Nelson. I need to also have a call with him so we can balance it out. So that's what I did. I reached out to Nelson on the forum and I reached out to Nelson on Twitter. My tweet got a fuckload of attention, at least for unturned standards. And after an email from me and my two Sicilies, he agreed to have a town hall meeting. There were like 200 people there and you could like select people out of the audience and it's like it's actually a really cool feature. And me and Sicilies were up first. <laughs> no pressure. You just have to talk to someone that made one of your favorite games in front of an audience of people. And also, I was made aware that this was happening seven minutes before it actually started. I went on to Discord, got 10 fucking messages from my two Sicilies saying, we're getting in a call with Nelson, unturned official. Nelson sends me a friend request on Discord. I say, hello, and he's like, we're starting this in like five minutes. And I'm like, what? I was not prepared at all. No hate to Nelson, by the way. I just wasn't prepared. I thought the call was going to be more like the call that he had with Brad and Fudgy, where it'd be like some private thing. But we did it in front of like a live audience. Of course, I spared no expense at exposing Brad in front of like 200 people in the unturned official and in front of Nelson, even though Nelson said he already saw my video which I was surprised by. A lot of other people also came to talk after me and Sicily's. So I'm gonna leave the whole town hall meeting in the description of this video because Nelson also uploaded that to the Smartly Dressed Games YouTube. So you can watch 
the entire two hour long event in the description if you want. Now obviously you guys just don't want to hear me talk for 14 billion seconds. So I'm just going to cut it to the actual interview with Nelson and then I'll probably do a recap a little bit afterward. But besides that, this is the 2021 Z-Man 1064 My Two Sicilies interview with creator and game developer of Unturned, Nelson Sexton. Thanks for having us, even though it's... I mean, it's late for me. I don't know if it's late for you. Uh, it's only 5 o'clock for me. I'm sorry it's late for you, though. And uh, welcome back, by the way. I know you uh, had kind of taken a break from Unturned. Should I start or should you start, Zeman? I guess I'll start. So um, basically, okay, I wanted to uh, have this call because um, yeah, a lot of people were um, yeah, a lot of people talked about we're talking about the microtransactions. Some like server owners, basically like high profile ones, who, like went on the forums, like they made accounts just to go on there. They didn't agree with the changes you were proposing. I think probably because it would affect their revenue in some way. I don't I don't know when this whole like trend of servers like selling all this garbage like especially with the whole sales fraud i'll get to that in a minute but basically where they host their server they like sell absurdly high priced ranks and they're like there's admin bias where if you have a role you get like perks like you get recognized more by admins especially on rp like on rp servers i've had experiences where you get like kos or something right by the um by a donor you get banned <laughs> and not the person that broke the rules Obviously, there's no real fix for that, but the the changes you suggested, Nelson, um, that would greatly improve this problem that I've been talking about for like three months. Uh, obviously, uh, Sisley's here. He's helped me a lot in those videos. He quit recently. Uh, he got like DDoSed or something. That was um, I looked into it. It was unrelated to um, Brad. Like basically, I've had a. I'm having a bit of a feud with brad right now uh it's sp it's spanned over a few videos uh i like sh i proved he's like committing sales fraud on his website it's just it's interesting stuff the videos are all like public if people are interested in looking at that if you don't mind i just wanted to add some context to that i think um in regards to brad uh i did see that video and i th if i recall correctly the for the sales fraud, you were pointing out that he wasn't charging tax on the items, and that also that he had a perpetual sale where every four hours it would reset the timer. Yeah. And so I do agree that resetting the timer every four hours, that's very um, deceitful, I suppose. Yes. Um, very and I think some people brought up in emails, and I, I've said that depending on where he's based out of, that is probably illegal. Like, I know that in Canada, that would be illegal. Um, or... I'm not sure if illegal is the word, but it is. There's some government body that regulates that. Yeah. Um, but as for the taxes, I know that there's multiple ways that could be handled. Like, even if the price doesn't display a tax, if he is paying taxes on purchases in certain areas, he could always include that in the price. Um, or with a lot of online sites, it will say, we we don't have to charge tax to you here because we're providing the service out of where we're based. We don't have offices in your country. Um, so I think... I do agree that the time sales is not good. I mean, I've, but as for saying that he's committing tax fraud, I don't, I think he would be the only one who can talk about that. Yeah, that was definitely, um, I will take an L on that one. That was, uh, that was actually not to throw my Sisley's under the bus, but he brought that up. To yeah, me. I know. Okay. You brought that up I... to me, to be honest. Although I did put it in, so it is partially my fault. I, do I think he's like, committing actual fraud probably not now that i know the uh more the logistics of like how the servers are actually run i've had people tell me how it actually works so i have a, a little bit of a better understanding but yeah the whole time sales like that and when i saw like you had like a call with them with um fungi or fudgy i don't i don't know how to pronounce his name i'm a bit uh tired right now <laughs> i don't know how that happened did they contact you nelson yeah, so I think last Friday, I think, they had said that they wanted to talk, and I said, I'd prefer if you post on the forums, and so then they said, but they thought that they would be able to better communicate through voice, and so then I said again on Monday, I wish, or I'd prefer if you would, no, it actually might have been on the weekend that I said that I'd prefer if you post on the forums, but um, I think they also felt a bit uncomfortable posting on the forums, considering that the majority of players on the forums are anti 
pay to win. Even if Brad and Fudgy don't feel they're running pay to win servers, I think they felt like they would get a lot of backlash for posting on the farm. So I think mm. to some degree it is understandable that they yeah. didn't want to post. Uh, obviously, I would prefer if everyone would post on text because I think that makes things simpler. But yeah. uh, now that's why we're here. So everyone can talk. And after Z Man and My Two Sicilies talk, then uh, anyone else is free to join in as well. Another, like, so I basically just have a question. Is this confirmed? Is this like getting implemented or. Is this more of like a speculative idea that you had? Is this going to be implemented into the game? So the the purpose of the proposal was to... Well, I figured that my initial wording was probably bad. Like my... And obviously a lot, a lot of things have come up that don't fit well into what I how I originally worded it. And a lot of confusion about what repeat purchases mean versus microtransactions. And I still think the the naming of repeat purchases or microtransactions is a bad way to describe it. Um, so the purpose there was to get some feedback and better understand uh, how that would need to be adjusted. But the plan is to go ahead with this. And I think probably by the, the end of this week, we'll have some better wording of how the rule will actually be. Uh, and then there's been a few other things that have come up, like the ability for servers to mark themselves as having no microtransactions or uh, cosmetic only or flat out pay to win and so a few other things have come out of this as well and so then my current thinking is that there'll be a two week period before anything happens where it's just kind of the information's out there server hosts are hopefully swapping over uh, and then after that we'll start putting warnings on the server lobby screen saying that either they have marked themselves as being no microtransactions but they do have them or they are still selling whatever is not allowed uh, and then two weeks after the warning period is when servers will start getting a ban notification for for breaking those. So it'll they'll actually be on like the server list. It'll be a warning saying that there are transactions on the server regarding the the ability for them to tag themselves as having microtransactions. Yeah, basically. So I think the current idea there would be that there every server has the config.json file where there's some miscellaneous settings for the server browser. And so it would be, by default, it would be unset. And so it wouldn't have an effect on anything. But then server hosts can choose to set, uh, we have no microtransactions, or we do have microtransactions, but they're cosmetic only, or we do have microtransactions, and they include uh, gameplay benefits. Mm -hmm. And so then in the server browser, by default, all servers would be shown. But then there could also be a filter where you can filter by servers that have no microtransactions, because I know that, especially if you're looking for vanilla servers, uh, you want to look for servers that don't have microtransactions. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's and so then if a server has like pay to win and they've marked themselves as not having anything, then we would ban them for that. And the reason that we can't do that automatically, for example, the workshop filters and whatnot are automatic. The reason it can't be done automatically is that all the per server purchasing systems are handled by mods or plugins or through external websites. Uh, so it's not something that we can automate. Uh, the whole uh, filtering out servers that have transactions, is that so? That's a good idea, actually. I like that. So yeah, actually, just to build on that, uh, I think it does kind of solve kind of a middle ground of, I don't want to just flat out say no microtransactions because I don't want to uh, cause problems for who knows how many people they're hosting servers. And obviously there are servers that have like donation systems or uh, whatever to pay for the costs. Um, I think it's unrealistic to just completely remove anything like that. Um, so hopefully it's this is more of a compromise. Yeah. Um, also for the record, for Under the people here, um, I don't like hate like servers trying to make money. It's just when they like overdo it to the point where it like ruins the gameplay experience and they put money before actual just player enjoyment, that's where it's like, that's when it becomes bad. So yeah, another question. I'm actually just going to, because I remember Trident Games, actually, because I made a tweet earlier asking for this interview, which has happened. Thank you, by the way. Trident asks, is there going to be any more changes slash rules about servers on the 3.0? Recently, the rules for breaking Steam community guidelines and... uh workshop copyright infringement have been 
they have an actual page now that says you can't do that. It's just been informal before or an unwritten rule. Um, as far as pay to win goes, this is the main rule I'm thinking of right now. Uh, and I think the, the filter will help with this as well. Um, but I don't want to be every week you have to check up on the rules list because who knows what Nelson's changed. He's a madman with new <laughs> rules every week. So I do want to be cautious and like there's going to be this one month period before anything actually goes into effect. Uh, so I, I don't foresee going crazy with a whole bunch of new rules. I know some server hosts are worried about that. Yeah. If there's something that seems like a reasonable change to the rules, I am, I think, more open to changing those now. Um, I know a lot of people have been frustrated with me in the past for just saying anything goes, anyone can do whatever they want on their servers. So this is a step towards having some rules, but not a crazy rush into we're going to have tons and tons and tons of rules. You said like servers will be taken down if they don't comply with the rules. So like, what's the logistics of that? Right now, the idea is that, well, so at the moment, there's a file that can be updated when there's a regular game update. And um, that file can filter servers by a regular expression for their name. Uh, so that means like things like spaces or weird invisible spaces or whatever are taken into account. And then also IP address. So that's been used in the past for a few things, like when there were uh, server networks pretending to be, or scammers pretending to be a different server network. But that obviously, it requires a game update to put that out. So this will have a new online updatable blacklist where it can be updated anytime. Uh, so that will be a step towards making it so we can moderate servers more real time. Um, but it will be by IP and name at the moment, just because there isn't a better way to identify servers. And so I know that there are the game server login tokens that Valve has as a way to identify servers and to make it easier to moderate them. Uh, I don't think they have a public way for game developers to opt into that, so I'd have to contact someone at Valve. And that also adds another barrier to entry if you want to host a server, because you would then need the game server login token, for an internet server at least. I think LAN, uh, you don't need it. Uh, but then that would make it so that um, I don't think the login token is publicly visible. Like in the API, I don't think it shows up there. But on uh, a private server, like a game developer server, uh, we could uh, retrieve a separate copy of the server list that does include those. And so then we could have another API that the game client uses to check which servers are allowed or what their status is. And that could actually allow some other stuff like voting on servers, which has its, all its own pro problems. Um, but it, at the moment, it would be email me, say this server has pay to win and they're marked as not having pay to win. Then I'll go and double check. And I'm just counting on there hopefully not being too many cases because that really doesn't scale well. But I think we can adjust based on how the reaction goes. Just so I'm like extra super clear, right? Because I'm like a brainlet. Basically, so this is, is, so this is getting, this is going to be a thing. This is getting implemented. Yeah, this should happen, I expect, sometime in June. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, that makes sense. We'll probably make a decision this week of what the rules will be, and then in June is when it will actually go into effect. Okay. Did you have anyone, like, try to convince you not to implement it? Like, you don't have to name names, like, but did you have any, any people, like, contact you in regards to that? I think... So there have been people saying, no, don't do this. And even on the forum and GitHub post, there's people saying, no, this is unreasonable. Um, and I think it is kind of understandable that for anyone who is trying to run a good server and uh, this is scary, that there would be some rules in place, especially if they're worried that I'm going to go insane and add a billion new rules. Um, and I think it's reasonable for people to want to be able to cover their costs from the servers or make a profit if they're uh, providing server hosting services. Um, it has been kind of funny to see some of the community members saying like, no, this isn't fair. People that I would have thought are more interested in the in protecting players, but then are kind of coming out of the woodwork as we want our server to make loads of money. But as you said, not naming names. Yeah, not naming names. Sicilies, did you um have anything you wanted to say? You've kind of just been quiet for a bit. Uh, yeah, I, 
I was waiting for you guys to be done. Uh, oh. I actually have a lot of to, to talk about, but uh, uh, I guess let's get right into it. Okay. Uh, that sounds like a YouTube intro now. <laughs> uh, so, hey guys, my two Sicilies here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you should make okay, that your intro. So, no. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is I heard in the interview that you did with Brad and Fudgy that they claim that there's no winning to RP servers. To one extent, that is actually true, but it was true. It, it's not true anymore, really. The concept shifted from uh, just having fun while enjoying a realistic or, so to speak, experience, because at the end of the day, roleplay is just you trying to play according to a role which would exist in real life or something very close to that. There is a still a way to quote-unquote win at roleplay, and that is to become the richest person on the server, which can 100% be achieved by buying stuff off the store. So the notion that the RP cannot be paid to win is just, is just a flat-out lie. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know that's what they argued, but I agree that, for example, GTA Online, the... Maybe I should stop making references to games that aren't unturned when we're talking about unturned. But anyway, uh, GTA Online, the shark cards kind of ruined GTA Online. It'd be such a better game if everyone could pay the upfront cost and then play the online mode and unlock things in a reasonable amount of time. I don't agree with the argument that it's fun to be able to skip the progression by paying. Yes, and so the other thing I wanted to discuss is that Okay, you in in the video you uploaded of the interview, I heard that you were able to find a server for something around 50 euros or something, 50 dollars on Amazon or something. Is that true? Uh, so I think that was referring to uh, when we were doing some of the testing for Kuwait most recently. I have experimented with different server types on Amazon. Amazon rents out servers by the hour, but you can save money by reserving a server for a year in advance. And so a server that runs unturned well would cost around 40 US per month to reserve for a year. Uh, that's what I was going off of. I'm sure you can get lower cost by talking with someone like uh, OVH and reserving a uh, the machine itself as opposed to virtual machines. Yes, okay. I just wanted to clarify this to make this clear so that I could then use it as a launch pad for the actual argument. And so Yes, it is completely true that you can get servers for much cheaper than that. I, when I still used to own a server, usually bought a 20 euro uh, monthly server from GTX. There definitely is a cost to owning a server, but many of the arguments that Brad and Fudgy brought up, I really do not understand. Uh, I would like to ask you, if you can, to go on the Unturned Workshop, and if you can, search up Brad's core and if you go into the mod, download it and see the files, you will notice that it's just Brad, he's taken a couple of mods, put them together, didn't give any credits in the description. And so what most of these servers do, which I feel like should be moderated more, is they take original mods from the workshop, they put them into bundles, and then they claim it as, oh yeah, these are expenses because we made this mod custom. Most of these servers do not do that. I've only seen very, like, very few servers do this in the past. And this issue is quite personal to me because I have spent like 500 euros wholeheartedly willingly on custom mods. And I guess some people here in the audience can be a witness of that because some of them are the people I commissioned. It's really weird how these servers can justify having such high prices or having these transactions, I guess, by saying that there are these expenses because most of them just do not have them. The other one I uh, heard in the interview was plugins. And to be fair, that actually is a good point. But the thing is, it's only a surface point because unless you are having the plugin custom made, if you buy it from uh, one of those plugin companies, I guess, you can get them for relatively cheap on a sale. It, they're just a one-time purchase. You don't have to buy them a second time, a third time, or whatever. They're a lifetime purchase. And so it really does not justify having a $40 transaction when you have a plugin that costs, I don't know, $15 or something like that. I think going back to what you're saying about the workshop, um, so if there 
Uh, I did find the file you were talking about for workshop. Actually, I recognize some players in the, um, I don't know, lobby for this call actually have talked to me before about workshop issues. The process right now is that if someone is re-uploading your files to the workshop, uh, it's fairly straightforward to do a DMCA claim against them. And so then uh, what happens is Steam's moderators will take a look at the file and they will uh, ban the re-upload. And actually, I think if you get banned too many times, it'll actually stop you from uploading more. So there's actually been a couple of cases where the server host got their friends to start re-uploading the files. But anyway, that's a tangent. Um, so the current plan around that sort of thing is that if there is a server that has been stealing people's workshop files and uh, re-uploading them without their permission. So obviously it's fine to use someone's existing workshop file on your server with permission. Uh, for example, Elver. Uh, obviously we want lots of servers hosting Elver or Kuwait coming out. But if, if you email me about that, then I'll go take a recording of the workshop files list on the server. So just quickly connect to the lobby screen, download the workshop file list, and then save that for later. And so then if a bunch of their files are getting taken down for copyright strikes, then the server will be banned the same as with this proposal. So there is a system in place for that. And then as for, I guess, the other side of what you're talking about, the costs are a lot lower than... Very negligible. Yes, just in general, they make them to be much higher than they are because that's the only way they can push for such high prices for their stores. Based on the prices from plugin sites, like it's definitely easy to see that they probably are lower than they're saying there, but I guess it's all kind of speculation. We don't know what hardware they have or what mods they're using or plugins, but it is probably lower than they say. Um, yes. The uh, most expensive game server is probably 2B2T. What they have, like, I don't, I don't remember what processor. They have some really crazy computer hosting that server, though. I mean, they must have otherwise it's just like, uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, really in my experience of owning a server, the biggest expense was a voluntary one. So I made that expense out of my own pocket. I never had any donations on my server. So this all came out of my pocket of me being like a tutor. I go to people's houses and uh, teach them shit. That That's where the money came from. I never asked any of my players for money in these servers are claiming that they have all this fancy custom made stuff when in reality they have nothing is just re-uploaded stuff it it really becomes an insult to those people who take their money take their time out of their lives to actually create something original that is something that i've been trying to combat for like two years now i was active on the common workshop in the reporting channel for mods uh, I got a couple of mods taken down, but it's just a very slow process. Many modders just give up because they know that at the end of the day, their mod is going to be uploaded by either that guy or the other guy. Maybe some Chinese, Turkish, Russian. Those guys almost never get banned. I'm not uh, picking on nationalities, but most of them are of, the, of those, like, coming from those countries. I have had personal experience with uh, many, many servers re-uploading my content um or using uh i'm not gonna name the program but using a ripping tool to unpack the unity 3d files and turn them back into meshes that they can retexture um and even remesh completely i guess in my experience it does come from parties outside of the united oh, yeah, states too. um and it is very frustrating chiming on that i think uh Obviously, it's a very different sort of thing, and I think um, on the Unturned side, there's been like some re-uploads of Unturned the game itself to other sites that then I've had to deal with their support trying to get the game taken down. Or in the past, before I made Unturned, uh, people that took copies of games that I made and upload them elsewhere. So I guess in that way, I kind of empathize with it sucks trying to deal with these people that have copied your work. And so for that reason, I tried to be like extra receptive to helping deal with it but it does suck that the process is so slow i'm not really sure what the answer is to make it faster but for what it's worth i agree it sucks now i will be leaving the full interview in the description of this video so to summarize basically after three months of complaining something was finally done about unturned pay to win 
Nelson confirmed this is going to get implemented this summer. My Two Sicilies messaged Nelson Sexton directly and actually got some of Brad's workshop items removed from the unturned workshop because Brad was stealing workshop items. Fun fact, I didn't actually even really know the details of that until this interview, so you learn something new every day. Now, obviously, this was a big L for Unturned Pay to Win, and this was an even bigger L for Brad's RP, the server I've been basically shitting on for, like, the past three months. Now, of course, I would like to thank everyone that went over to the forums, everyone that retweeted my shit on Twitter, and everyone that got Nelson's attention, because without you guys, this video and this interview wouldn't have been possible. So, you guys are fucking incredible. I think I have one of the best fan bases on this website. But yeah, essentially that was it. Thank you, Nelson, for giving me the opportunity to interview you and have a discussion with you. I tweeted out after the interview, shout out to Nelson for actually listening to his community and communicating other game developers should take notes, and he actually liked the tweet. So, Nelson, definitely the GOAT when it comes to that one. But yeah, that's essentially the video. I appreciate everyone that helped me get to this point. Brad's RP can do the sucky sucky. And with that being said, I hope you guys all have a good day. Or night. Or evening. I don't fucking know. Alright, see you guys later. Прощай, 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 любимая